All right, check this out. According to Google, who you know knows everything, the term sexless marriage was searched three and a half times more than the term unhappy marriages and over eight times more than the term loveless marriage. So I think it's probably time for us to talk about it. So this idea of sexual rejection in relationship is common in many marriages. And today in this video, we wanna talk about why couples find themselves in a sexless marriage and what to do if your spouse doesn't wanna have sex with you. That's today on Relation Shots. Welcome to Relation Shots. My name is Eric Wooten. If this is your first time hanging out with us, welcome to the place to get practical relationship advice that actually works in your relationship. If you've not already done so, go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any upcoming videos. All right, so here's the deal. If the sexual relationship in your marriage is not quite where you want it to be, then you've come to the right place today because we're going to talk about that. So let me first off say that if that's you, a comparison is not your friend, communication is your friend. When you start comparing how much sex you're having to your friends or to some movie or some TV show or whatever else you read in the tabloids, uh, you're probably not gonna end up in the right place. Communication with your spouse is the key to getting your sexual relationship back on track from where you want it to be. But let me say this before we jump into some of the reasons you may be there and what to do to get out of there. First, let me talk to wives and then let me talk to husbands. Wives, understand this. Sexual rejection is greater than any other kind of rejection for your husband. For some reason, there's something tied to it for a lot of men where they wanna be successful in this area, they want you to be satisfied in this area, and so when they're rejected here, it feels worse than about any other rejection they could take. Like their boss can tell them they're horrible and they're fired, they can get over this. Their friends from high school can call them fat and bald, they can get over that. The guy on the street can call them a punk, they'll get over that, but there's something different about sexual rejection from their wives that is more painful and cuts deeper than a lot of other things. So you want to be careful in this area with your husband. And then let me say this to husbands, uh, your wives do not compartmentalize like you do. They're not able to discount all the rest of the relationship and then jump into a sexual relationship with you. So many of them, if the other areas of the relationship are not nurtured, it's gonna be really difficult for them to wanna to connect with you sexually. So they can't do like you, which is be gone all day, have an argument, talk crazy, and then crawl into bed at the end of the night talking about, hey boo, they don't, they don't operate like, they don't compartmentalize. So you need to nurture the other areas of the relationship before you can even start having a conversation about why don't you wanna have sex with me? So now that I've addressed wives and husbands real quick on those two things, uh, let's look at four areas that I think are real important when trying to figure out why are we existing in a sexless marriage? Why are we not having sex as often as we want to? And even that word sexless marriage is tough because there's no precise definition. Now, a lot of experts say that it's a couple who has sex less than 10 times a year, which would be less than one time a month. Um, but here's the deal. It doesn't matter if you're having sex once every two months or you haven't had sex in five years. If you two or one of you is not happy with where you're at in the sexual relationship, it's important to talk about and it's important to do the things to improve it. So I just wanna address four areas that I think may be helpful in trying to figure out why we're not having as much sex. And so number one, I'm just gonna call emotional. Maybe you can call it relational. But as I said just a minute ago, uh, for a lot of women, they need to feel connected emotionally in order to want to engage sexually. And now that doesn't mean men have no interest in this, because they do, and men want to feel connected as well, but it tends to be more important for women. So if the other areas of the relationship are not connected, uh, husbands are not helping around the house, husbands are not attentive to the needs of their wife emotionally, they're not connecting on a friendship level, is gonna be real difficult at the end of the day for the wife who feels disconnected to want to engage in a sexual relationship with their spouse because they don't feel connected in all these other areas. So if you've heard your spouse say, again, this is not just unique to women, it just tends to be more so for women, but this can apply to husbands just as well, uh, depending on their personalities and their emotional needs. But if you've heard your spouse say, it's hard for me to have sex when 
I don't feel like we're connected, when there's tension between us, when we're in the midst of conflict, when I don't feel like we have a friendship, when you don't even talk to me, when you don't spend time with me. Those are all pretty good indicators that emotional reasons are driving why they're having a hard time or have no interest in engaging in a relationship with you. And so if that's the case, you need to do some things to address that and to connect on that. And uh, I have a free guide on the website that you can use the link below and check that out, which will help you come up with some ways to begin connecting emotionally, spiritually, relationally, so that you're also able to connect physically. So that's one area is the emotional area. Uh, the next area I would say worth talking about is biological. And here's just the foundation of sexual drive is most of it's driven by testosterone which is why men tend to have a higher sex drive than women because they tend to have greater levels of testosterone than women do. So if the relationship is pretty good, i.e. the emotional area has been taken care of, but one of the spouses still doesn't have a whole lot of drive or interest in sex, it could be a biological issue. They could have low levels of testosterone. So if the relationship's pretty good, but there's still no interest, uh, I would encourage you to go to your doctor, do some uh, blood work, some labs, and have them test specifically testosterone to see if you have a really extremely low levels, that may be an issue that you can resolve in a number of ways medically from shots to uh, pills to little pellets that get inserted. There's many different ways to increase testosterone, uh, but it may just be simply a biological deal that I love our relationship, I feel connected to you, but for some reason I just biologically don't have a whole lot of drive and to improve that, you can raise the testosterone levels. So it may be a biological issue worth dealing with. The third area is psychological. And here's where our mind, past trauma, past pains, hurts come into play. So if you've got any kind of psychological deal that, that you may be dealing with, uh, maybe it's anxiety, depression, PTSD, all of that is gonna affect your desire to engage in a sexual relationship with your spouse. And here's the deal, a lot of medications that are prescribed for that also as a side effect have low sex drive. So it may be that either the issue itself or the medication may be impacting the drive. But also if you think about the sexual relationship, uh, if your spouse has had any kind of trauma sexually in their life, maybe a, a sexual assault, a rape, uh, sexual abuse as a child, all of that is gonna bring with it some perspectives and mindset of negativity around the sexual relationship that you don't just flip a switch on when you get married and go, okay, now it's a good thing, so all those negative experiences are now erased. It becomes a healing process. And so it may be that your spouse wants to engage in a sexual relationship with you, but there's so many negative feelings that it's hard for them to see it as a good thing in the context of a healthy marriage because of past experiences and hurt. And I just wanna encourage you, if that's you, that if you seek counseling and some other avenues, there is healing in that area where you can enjoy a healthy sexual relationship and move past some of those negative thoughts. But if that's you and there's been some trauma and there's been some negative experiences around sexuality, I'd really encourage you to get with a counselor or maybe some program that addresses specifically, and even a counselor who is specifically knowledgeable in those areas to be able to help you walk that out and find a level of healing so that you can have the freedom to engage in a healthy sexual relationship with your spouse now in the marriage. And the fourth area I wanna talk about is physical. So it may just be that your spouse is not enjoying the sexual activity that you currently are engaging in within a relationship. Maybe it's not satisfying to them. Uh, maybe they're not comfortable with some of the things that are going on. Maybe they feel like you're selfish inside the sexual relationship. You're more focused on what you can get than on what you can give. Or maybe they feel like you're pressuring them to do things that they're not comfortable with. And I'm seeing this a lot in marriages where one spouse is not protecting their mind and they're going outside of the marriage, i.e. with porn, uh, thinking about past sexual experiences and they're not protecting their mind. And so sexual immorality in their own mind, the things they're viewing, the things they're thinking about, they now are bringing those ideas and expectations into their marriage, throwing those on their spouse and basically saying, I've brought all these expectations and ideas from outside sources and now you're gonna be the one to fulfill them all. 
and it may not be a healthy thing. And so your spouse is avoiding having sex with you because the shame and the guilt that comes from you forcing them to do things they're not comfortable with, or maybe just your sexual drive is driven by you feeding yourself daily with porn, looking at other things, that now you're expecting your spouse to keep up with your drive, but your drive's not healthy because it's driven by the sexual immorality that you're allowing into your life. And I'm seeing this over and over with a lot of couples. So you can see that whether it's the physical, the biological, the emotional, or psychological, there's a number of things that could be impacting your spouse wanting to have sex with you. The starting point for this is good communication. I don't care who you are, what season of life you're in, healthy sexuality within the confines of marriage is going to be driven by healthy communication around your sexuality. So if you find yourself in a sexless marriage, maybe your spouse does not seem very interested, I think the starting point is to just to have an honest, healthy, uh, non-attacking, so that it won't be a defensive conversation. Ask your spouse something like this. Hey, is there a time maybe we could sit down and talk about our sexual relationship? It's not really where I want it to be, and I don't know if it's where you want it to be because you don't seem to want to engage in it. Is there a time we could sit down and talk about what's blocking or hindering us from having a healthy sexual relationship. And if that conversation doesn't go real well, then I would encourage you to maybe do the same thing with a counselor or a trusted mentor couple, but it's all gonna begin with healthy communication and coming to an understanding of why does this person not wanna engage in sexual relationship with you? so that we can remove some of those uh, blockages and begin the process of growing together sexually. As I said earlier, uh, maybe if you need a little kickstart on the connection piece, the emotional connection, the, the friendship, uh, you can download my free guide to intimacy. There's a link below to the website and that'll give you some ideas and some tools and steps to begin connecting again if it's the emotional relational aspect that's holding you back. I look forward to hearing your thoughts about this. We could have a long discussion about this. I think it's an important thing to talk about. So drop your thoughts in the comment section below and let's dialogue about it. If you think this video would be helpful to a friend or your spouse, consider sharing it with them. And I look forward to seeing you right here next time on Relationships.